So first you should have a data in your file. If you want to, uh, So if you want to uh, read the data, you have to first have that file in your local somewhere, right? That path you specified. So this one, and you have to, uh, let's see how you can write the files, okay? Let's go create a new class. So create a so package first, file handling, examples. And uh, file input stream demo. Okay, so I'm going to create a first. Uh, no, uh, any data you take, uh, some data. Okay, maybe you can take this data. Okay, you can take this data. So you want to read this data, right? You can use this data if you want to read this data. So just try it out. Okay, I'm going to uh, declare first what are the things you need, you should understand. First, I need my, uh, I'll create some reference objects. So objects I'm making global variables. So that also I want to show how to make a global uh, reference variable and how to pass the value for that global reference variable. So that also important, you should understand. I'm covering that here. Static data type is a file data type, f equal to null. Initially I assigned a f value as a null. So later I, I'm going to give that file. So this is imported from java.io package. So then I need a private file input stream demo, right? Uh, static file input stream fs equal to null so use file input stream and i am i'm going to give a file path private static string so file input path input file path, I'll give input file path. Input file path. Can you input file path? So what is this input file path? Uh, you give any file, you save that file and then you, know, you can now uh, so give that. Maybe you can now uh, just give. I'm going to save this file. This file. Any file. So we just have the file. Let me close all the values. Okay. 
Okay. So just save this. Uh, I'll save this as an input file. Save as. I'll just give a file name as input file. Maybe I can put Java programs. I can create a new folder that is um, it's going somewhere. I don't want store here. Yeah, just save that. So input file, okay, input.txt. So now you give this file path. What is that file path? So we have to give, we have to give C drive, Java programs. This is the path you have to give. And you uh, with the file name, with the file name you have to give. input.txt. This is the file path, exact file path I'm giving. Exact file path I'm giving. Okay. So now, here, so next. Okay, you got a file class object reference file input stream class object reference and input file. So first create object for file class. Because you have to pass the f reference variable value. What is the f reference variable value? Hmm? What is that? Null. Null. New class. New class. Right. Object reference, object. So F value is always object. F value is object and A. Eh? The reference variable value is always object. So how can you pass F value? So with object. That's the value. Always object reference value is new class name. If it is a parameterized constructor, pass parameter value. That's what I'm passing. I need to pass my file path. Next. So what is FS value? Hmm? New file input. Hmm. Create object file. So file input stream. So how to pass the FS value? FS equal to new file, file input stream. stream and pass the F reference. So from this file you are reading and see I'm going to cover here again exception handling concepts. So exception handling concepts we are going to cover. Exception handling concepts we are going to cover here again. So let's See that, how to add a try catch block. This see, compile time itself, it is suggesting for you. I'm going to surround with a try catch block. Just save it and mouse over here. So come. See, add throws declaration or surround with a try catch block. So I'm going to surround with a try catch block. So that means this line is throwing an exception. What kind of exception? File not found exception. File not found exception is what kind of exception? What are the different type of exceptions? Compile time exception. Exceptions contain exceptions. Hmm? Okay, compile time, but what do you call that name? 
I have given some name, right, for them. Compile time exception, what you call? And run time exception, what you call? Hmm? You're not reading at all, and yeah, simple things also without reading your coming means. Hmm? That I told you very important interview question also that one. Sir. Checklist. Hmm, you're right. Checked exception. And uh, so yes. runtime exception is called unchecked exception. Okay. So that's very, very bad. Basics also you are not reading and coming. How you will do that? I don't understand. Hmm? You're not feeling ashamed? Okay. So, I want to read the data. So, one by one bytes, because a lot of data is there. So, this I told you, byte by byte it will read. Byte by byte means one by one byte. So byte means it's an integer. So int i so equal to zero. And then I will iterate while. So i to so fs dot read method. You have to use a read method. So you are reading. And uh, then I will store this. And if i value is not equal to not equal to minus one. Minus one means last line. Not equal to minus one. See again, this is the twentieth line. FS dot read is throwing an exception. So you have to declare it. See what is the exception? Mouse over. Unhandled exception type IO exception. So IO exception also what category? Checked exception. Checked exception. That's why it is. While writing the code itself, it is throwing exception. All the checked exceptions are compile time exceptions. So writing the code means you are compiling. So it will be Java code is a compiles while writing itself. Okay, just check add throws declaration. See it added. Throws keyword is adding a where in the method signature line. Throws is followed by what? What is this? Class. 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 That's it. And now you got the integer value, the byte data, and you need to convert. How can you convert integer into character format? You want to print that character. You have byte now. How can you print the character? Hmm? How can you do that? Then what will happen here? What is the why you are getting error here? Type mismatch. Type mismatch. Excellent. Type mismatch. See here. Type mismatch. Why why type mismatch here? So right side one is an integer. Okay. Left side one is a character. So the memory size is uh, right side one is a bigger one. That's why you need to typecast it. Convert this into character. So that character you can print it. So use uh, print method instead of println. Use print method. So that is C. And it will print all the value. And you can even write finally block also. Again, I'm covering the exception handling concepts. FS dot close. I'm closing the streams. Input stream object I am closing. So let's run this. See all the data it will read from that file. See, this is the data it was there in that file and it read. Okay, so that's how to read the data from file. Same you can do uh, buffering concept. Just copy this. 
and paste it and I'll add a buffering, buffered input stream. Buffered input stream. So what do you need to add extra? So private, static, buffered, input, stream, PS equal to null. So let's import that. And then just add extra. So BS equal to new buffered input stream. Buffered input stream. So FS. So now you need to read from BAS because the data came to BAS. And so now it will be read that. So run this. As a Java application. See, very faster. That's what buffering if you use is very, very, very fast. Okay. Any questions? No. Okay. So, fine. So this is the one, the buffered input stream and file input stream, how to use. So let's go and, you know, I'll, uh, so how to use file reader and buffer reader, right? Just, you know, simply I'll just copy. You, you got now what we are doing. So just I'll do buffer reader, copy this. And just you are uh, reading series. So what are the classes we need? File class, file reader class, buffer reader class. And uh, input file path, I'm just giving, uh, I'll take our input file path. So simply this one I'll give. Buffer reader. That's it. Okay. Input file path. So then see that object reference value how I'm passing. So again, I'm not writing this one. So class name, reference variable, I'm not writing again. This reference I already declared globally. That value initially I declared null. Now I'm passing the value for that. This is the value. File reader, object I'm creating. Buffer reader object I'm creating and a string. So because this will read, buffer reader will read entire line. That's why you are going to use string s equal to null. Try catch block we are using. While s equal to br dot read line is not null. That means, so until the last line, last line only is having null, right? The remaining all the data is it has. It has the data. Okay, so then, so I just printed it. So the value, the entire line I'm printing. Here I used a print ln, but for here, I used a print method. Why? What is the reason?
Okay. So, because here it is reading a one by one byte and I'm appending. Uh, so, line by in the same line, I have to add that. That's why. So, you have to use print. But here, it's the entire line you are reading. And next line it will read. That's why uh, that line I'm printing. And LN means that it will go to next line. So, this all we covered. I don't know. <laughs> the basics are completely you are missing. And so, I don't know what is happening with your batch. Hmm? Anyhow, so that's a completely you're missing. I cannot do anything. So the next one is um, how to write the data. This is the for reading Then how to write the data. So for writing, we have to use a file output stream, right? So let's take file output stream demo. See here, what we are doing here is from one file I am reading, from another file I am writing, to another file I am writing. So let me take here, this file is on my input file. So this is my input file. And this is my output file. This is my output file, but output file is not there. We haven't created right here. See that. Is there output file here? I'm going to create now on the fly. So on the fly, I'm going to create. Let me create output file. So file, out file equal to new file. I'm passing output file path I'm referring, but carefully observe here. I'm not using input file here because I'm creating a so output file. So if output file doesn't exist in this path, then output file object reference dot create new file. I'm, I'm saying create a new file. Create a new file. Then create a file object. So this object I'm referring f equal to new file and I'm referring the input file path. fs equal to new file input stream. I'm passing the input file path. So FOS equal to new file output stream. I'm passing output file reference. So int i equal to zero, first reading the data. Then that red data, I'm writing FOS dot. FOS reference I'm using for calling the write method. For FOS I'm using for reading the data. And I'm reading and I'm writing to another file. So this, uh, then close the FS and FOS. So then it will write to the file. See, automatically the file will create here. If file only doesn't exist, it will create. If file is there, it won't create again. So this block won't go. Then it will continue remaining code. So that's how conditions you have to write. So run this. And you can go and see the file there. See, just now created the file. You can see same file is available. Same data written to output file also. Okay. Any questions? That's how file output stream, how to use. Then we have a buffered output stream. So what is a buffered output stream? So buffered output stream is basically you are going to have uh, this input file. Let me take this input file. So, and I'm going to create doc file. I'm going to create a doc file, output dot doc. Before we created a text file, right? Now I'm creating a doc mm -hmm. file. See, buffered input stream I'm taking, buffered output stream I'm taking, file output stream. So input stream buffering, output stream buffering also I'm taking. So you have input file path, 
first output file path I am creating. This is the logic always for creating the file. This logic you have to use. And I am reading the data. And then see, please observe here. BOS dot write, BOS dot flush. Flush method, what it will do? So every time new flush, it will it will flush out the old stream and new stream it will read and then write that. Once it is written, then flush out that old stream. So then new stream will keep reading. So that is the how you can uh, so read the data. So any questions? Okay. See, so that's how to write the data to the files with a buffering concept. Buffered output stream. See this one. And you can go and see now doc file is available. So this is a doc file. Open what doc? See, it has written same data to the what doc also. Okay, so this is the how you can uh, write to the files. And last program, uh, buffer writer. So I want to write the data. How can you write the data? Okay, how can you write the data to the files with a buffer writer and file writer? So I'm using file writer. So let me take uh, the file. So this one is a bit difficult, uh, different one, I think. Output file path. Yeah, I'll use this. Okay, so what I'm doing here is, uh, so I'm creating the file, the text file, okay, right from keyboard. Uh, so I'm going to enter the data from keyboard. That data, you need to write it to the file. How can you write it? For entering the data from keyboard, you need a scanner class. Scanner is equal to new scanner system dot in. So you enter the data that you want to write to the file. So string str equal to sc dot next line. So whatever you enter the data that is a going to store in the str variable. So the next line method will re return string data. So it will store in the str variable. That I am writing to the file. So can you see here? So I will show you that later. First, so overwrite the data. Okay, this is the overwriting. FW equal to new file writer. Only one parameter is the constructor I'm using. So what it will do? It will overwrite every time you enter data. Old data will be gone. New data will be written to this file. So let's go and do that. And uh, so new buffer writer. So BW dot write. So this str data bw dot new line so go to the new line after writing bw dot flush so you flush it out so let's run this see this file will create there so enter the data that you want to write i'm learning file concepts so done now you go and see the data here so c drive Java programs. See, this is the just now. See, I'm learning file cuts. This is the one we have written, right? So we have entered there in the keyboard, the same data written now. So let's go and run one more time. 
So run the same date file one more time program. Okay, still running until you press enter key, it will finish the program execution. Okay, done. Now you go and open the file. So do you see the old data what we have written? No, sir. That you overwritten and new data written to the file. That's how overwriting the... So I want to append. How to append? If you want to append, just... So comment out this one and take a two parameterized constructor, file object reference and true. True means append the data. So now old data will be, this data will be there and new data, whatever you are writing, that also will be there. So now go and open the file. See, previous data is there and new data also there. So now you open, you run one more time. See now. See? So this every time it's so oh, no append the data in the new line. So that's the how to append the data, how to overwrite the data. You should be clear on this. Both I have shown you. So that's all about file concepts, reading and writing. And last concept I want to show you. Uh, list the files, I think. You need to list out the files. How many files are there? Mm. <coughs> I'll show you that. Let's go here. I think it is there. List of files. I'll just show here itself. So you need to list out in particular directory how many files are available, okay? So this is the one files and subdirectories you need to list out. So what, what is, I, I created a one generic method. So you can use this method for any directory you give in that directory. What are all the subfolders are there, files are there, everything will be written to you. And also you can filter. Uh, let's go and deep try you one by one line. So file object you create first and give the your directory, which directory you want to check. Then, so this uh, file object dot list files method, which returns an array. So file array, it returns a file list you are storing in the file array. So then iterate the, all the files using for each loop. For, so this collection data type is a file, f1 colon. So this is the for each loop syntax, colon, the collection name. So that's the collection. If f1 dot get name dot ends with dot xlsx, then print that. Then print the value. Otherwise, you don't want to give you know, any condition. Just you know, you want to put it. So maybe I'll just comment out this. I'll just print all the lines of code all the files. So f1 dot get name means each file or directory it will print that name. So here you give one directory so that I am giving this directory path. So I'm finding out all the list of files in this directory. So let's run this. See, okay, null pointer exception. How can you debug this? So Main method, so 30th line, 30th line, then 15th line. So here we are getting a null pointer exception. 
f1 dot uh, get name f1 when you are getting it so this path is not there what so we need to see open card automation is there or not Let's see users users from each one drive documents open cart yeah it's there right why it should give all the files Maybe this path is wrong. Yeah. So now you see it is listing out all the files. See, dot XML, dot MD, dot bat. So like this, right? It's listing out all the files in this directory. So that's how to list out and you want particular files. For example, I want only XML. So you can filter out. So how to filter out. So this is how to filter it out. Only XML files will print to you. That ends with the XML because see only XML files are printed. Remaining are not printed. This is how filtering is done with the if condition. Okay, so that's all about um, this file handling. So tomorrow we'll start the string handling. So that's another very important, uh, only two topics left now. String handling and collections, last topic. These are the very important topics. Uh, mostly by next week we can finish it. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Okay.